In other videos in this series, I've given an overview of sacral neuromodulation, which is a treatment for overactive bladder, urinary retention, and fecal incontinence. But if you are seriously considering this therapy, you have some additional decisions to make. Specifically, you may want to think about what kind of testing is appropriate for you. Join me as we dive into some detail about your options for sacral neuromodulation testing on the OAB Clinic. In sacral neuromodulation therapy, we stimulate the nerves that control bladder function in order to treat several types of problems. These include symptoms of overactive bladder, including urinary frequency, urgency, and urgency incontinence. Sacral neuromodulation can also be used to treat fecal incontinence as well as urinary retention. Sacral neuromodulation works by stimulating the nerves to the pelvis that control all of these functions. But why do you need to undergo a test of stimulation before having the device implanted permanently? Well, a sacral neuromodulation device actually has two components that can be separated. First of all, there's the lead, which is the wire that sits next to the nerve. This is attached to a generator that controls the stimulation and contains the battery that powers the signal. Because not everyone responds to the therapy, it's about 80%, we have to test out the therapy before implanting it permanently. One way to test the therapy is to place the permanent lead next to the nerve, but then connect it to a temporary battery that's worn in a pouch around your waist. The other way of testing is to place one or two temporary wires next to the nerve and connect those wires again to a temporary battery. Either way, some sort of testing is required. The generator is meant to provide therapy for many years, and there's simply no reason to implant that generator unless you're sure the therapy is going to be successful. Success with neuromodulation is often defined as at least 50% improvement in symptoms, whether that's trips to the bathroom, episodes of incontinence, the number of pads you use, or the number of times that you catheterize each day. Some patients will see far greater than 50% improvement, but without testing ahead of time, there's no way to reliably predict who will have satisfactory improvement. There's simply no other way for us to know who's going to improve enough to proceed with the therapy permanently. And that is the reason that we first test the therapy. So there are two ways of testing sacral neuromodulation prior to permanent implant. One type of testing we call peripheral nerve evaluation or a basic evaluation. This type of testing can be performed in the office without sedation. A second form of testing is called staged evaluation or advanced evaluation. This is performed in an operating room, usually under sedation or general anesthetic. In both types of testing, the goal is to find out how well you will respond and how well you'll tolerate the therapy before a permanent patient generator is placed. Both types of tests are used and you're free to choose which type you think is best for you. However, there may be some reasons to choose one test over the other that are not immediately obvious to you. I'd like to explore what is involved with each type of test and how the advantages and disadvantages of each may impact your decision. In a peripheral or basic evaluation, one or two tiny temporary wires are placed alongside the nerves instead of the permanent lead. Basic evaluations do not have to occur in the operating room and most patients don't need any sedation. You can actually drive yourself home after the procedure. Instead of sedation or general anesthesia, a numbing medicine is injected to prevent pain with the procedure. Since the permanent lead is not placed, there are no incisions needed. Instead, needles are placed under the skin into the natural openings of the sacrum where the nerves can be found. The wires are then threaded through the center of those needles. In peripheral nerve evaluations, we usually place the wires on both sides to test both the right and the left nerves. In the other type of test, the staged evaluation, we just place one lead on whichever side gives us the best response. The wires placed for peripheral testing 
are not as well anchored as the permanent leads, so the testing is usually for a shorter time, usually about a week or even less. During the test, you and your doctor can discuss how your symptoms are responding to the stimulation. If your symptoms are improving, you may not make any changes at all. If you're not seeing improvement, you may try stimulating on the opposite side or adjusting how high the stimulation is set. Keeping track of your symptoms in a diary can be useful to see any changes. At the conclusion of testing, the wires are easily removed by simply pulling them out. Patients who see satisfactory improvement during the test can go on and have both a permanent lead and the generator implanted in the operating room, and this would occur in a single session. One of the most important points to make about peripheral nerve evaluation is that if you do not see satisfactory improvement during that kind of test, it does not mean that your symptoms are not going to respond to sacral neuromodulation. In fact, if you see incomplete response to the basic testing, you'll often find that you have a good response to stage testing. In staged or advanced testing of sacral neuromodulation, the actual permanent lead is placed under the skin next to the nerve instead of temporary wires. But the generator is not placed at that time. Instead, the lead is connected to a very thin wire that exits the skin and is attached to the same small temporary battery that you wear around your waist. This allows you to test the therapy for multiple weeks without having the patient generator implanted. The lead is usually placed while you are under anesthesia, either sedation or general anesthetic. I usually prefer to place patients under a general anesthesia if it's safe. You will need someone to drive you home after the procedure, regardless of the type of sedation you use. During advanced testing, since the permanent lead is being placed, there are small incisions made over the sacrum and over the buttocks. These are the same incisions that you would have if you were having the permanent lead and generator placed. In stage testing, we'll often test out both sides while you're asleep, but ultimately we just place the lead in on one side, whichever side gives us the best response. Because the lead is placed with the advanced test, and it's designed to be permanent, we're able to test for a longer time, up to several weeks if needed. Just as with basic testing, if you and your doctor discuss the response and determine that the lead would, generator should be placed, that's how you proceed. If the results are satisfactory and you're pleased with the therapy, the generator is implanted and attached to the permanent lead. The generator is planted in a second procedure in the operating room, though often you won't need as much sedation for this second procedure. If you have not seen satisfactory improvement with uh, the staged evaluation, then all of the components are removed after an unsuccessful test. Both peripheral and stage testing are excellent options for determining if you're happy with the therapy. But let's discuss some considerations that may help you determine which is best for you. I'd like to begin by having you think of stage testing really as the standard form of testing. It's the most reliable in identifying everyone who should have a permanent implant, but it requires sedation or anesthesia in the operating room. By contrast, peripheral nerve evaluations offer a sort of shortcut for some patients, allowing them to find out if neuromodulation is effective without undergoing anesthesia. Permanent implant of a sacral neuro neuromodulation device will always require a trip to the operating room, but patients with a successful peripheral evaluation will have both components, the lead and the generator, implanted in one trip. But this needs to be balanced against the risk that you may not see improvement with a basic evaluation and will still need a stage test to see if neuromodulation is right for you. In my experience, there are some special circumstances that may encourage patients to consider stage testing over peripheral testing. First, if you have difficulty lying on your stomach for an extended period of time, you may prefer stage testing, which is performed while you're asleep. Placing wires for peripheral testing can often be done quite quickly, but in some patients, it can take longer to place them in an optimal position. If you're unable to tolerate lying down on your stomach for up to 30 minutes, this type of testing could be difficult for you. Now, most patients tolerate this quite well. The peripheral testing period is typically shorter, often a week or less. For most patients, it's plenty of time to determine a response. However, 
If you have fecal or urinary incontinence that only occurs every few days, it may take longer than a week to determine if you're experiencing a significant reduction in symptoms. In addition, there are some providers who feel that urinary retention patients benefit from a longer period of testing. Now, there's some early indications that the new peripheral evaluation wire may be able to test beyond seven days, possibly making it useful for those patients who need a longer interval of testing. However, the manufacturer of the device still recommends only a seven-day trial, and there is little evidence to guide us on testing beyond the seven days for this new version. Lastly, I always ask my patients who are having trouble deciding between peripheral and stage testing, what would you do if the percutaneous nerve evaluation testing was inconclusive? If you saw no response to peripheral testing, would you be too frustrated to then move on to stage testing? If that answer is yes, I recommend that you proceed straight to stage testing. Otherwise, there's simply too much of a risk that you'll miss the opportunity to have successful therapy just because the first test is indeterminate. Once again, if you've enjoyed this video looking in depth about neuromodulation, please like or subscribe this channel on YouTube. Or for even more information, visit our website at www.oabclinic.com for even more information on pelvic health. Thank you.